What's up, Tailgaters? You're in the booth with Tailgate Nate today. Welcome to my channel. Last bowl game preview prediction of the day. We'll have some more out for you tomorrow on Christmas Eve, which, by the way, happy holidays out there to everyone watching, whether you celebrate Christmas, Hanukkah, Kwanzaa, or anything else. Appreciate you tuning in, and happy holidays. Hope your holiday season is going well so far. Just a couple big days away uh, from the holiday I celebrate in Christmas. But let's dive on into this bowl game right here. It's the Texas Bowl, a Big 12 versus SEC showdown coming from Houston. It features a team from the state of Texas, the Texas A&M Aggies, facing off against the runner-ups from the Big 12 in the Oklahoma State Cowboys. <clears throat> we'll dive on into everything Aggies and Cowboys here in a second, but before we do that, you guys know I got to say thank you for all the love and support the channel has seen as of late. Regular season, postseason, you guys have absolutely killed it this summer and into the season as well. Continue to help show your support by interacting with the channel any way you can, whether that's doing what you're doing now and watching the video, doing the big thing, subscribing, ringing the bell, or simply liking, commenting, sharing. You're helping to support what I do here on YouTube, and I appreciate everything you guys may be willing and or able to do. And before we dive on into this bowl game here, I got to tell you, sometimes it can be a little tricky to determine who's opting out, who's entered the transfer portal, things like that. So I have a list of names, and it is quite the list of names here uh, when we are talking about Texas A&M. But for both teams, I have a list. If you guys feel like I've missed the name or something comes out after this video gets uploaded, Aggie fans, Cowboy fans, leave in the comment section down below. I'd be happy to hear what you guys have to say. But enough about all that. Diving on in to this bowl game preview and prediction. We're going to start with the Texas A&M Aggies uh, and go ahead and take a look at this offense first and foremost. So Max Johnson was the quarterback here for the most part uh, of the season. Connor Wiegman was another option at the quarterback position for the Aggies all season long. Both of those guys will not be playing. Max Johnson has entered the transfer portal, almost 1,500 yards this year. And Connor Wiegman, who had almost 1,000 yards this year, uh, is out for the year. He had uh, some sort of injury that has escaped my mind right now. So leave it to Jalen Henderson. He's 52 of 77, 704 yards, six touchdowns, and two interceptions. And he has the longest pass of the season for the Texas A&M Aggies at 51 uh, yards down the field. He averages 9.1 yards per throw, and he is a gunslinger. He's a really, really good option, and I think he's going to play really, really well. He is going to be without some really, really key weapons here. And again, the losses for Texas A&M just pile up as you talk about them. Anaya Smith is out. He has opted out here uh, of this game as the team's leading receiver. Evan Stewart has entered the transfer portal, and then the tight end, Jake Johnson, uh, has also entered the transfer portal as well. Uh, combined, you're looking at around 1,500 yards production between those three guys, uh, as well as a pretty good handful of touchdowns. There are 10 touchdowns between those three guys as well. So it's going to be up to Jade Walker, Noah Thomas, uh, and Moose Muhammad that will have to pick up the slack in the wide receiver production. As far as the running back room, uh, you have Amari Daniels, Le'Veon Moss, Nubin Owens, and then Jalen Henderson has proven he can get outside of the pocket and run a time or two as well. So I think the run game is going to be fine. The run game is going to hold up. How will this pass game perform without a ton of key weapons, especially that without Stewart and Smith? Well, this is an offensive line that might have to improve a little bit as well. 2.33 sacks per game allowed is not the best mark. However, it's a team that doesn't turn the football over a lot, and it's really good on third downs. Now, defensively, this is where the strength of this Aggie team comes in. This is a very, very strong defensive team, and there are defensive weapons all over the field. Now, they're going to be without a couple key defensive linemen, uh, that in Walter Nolan and Fadil Diggs. Uh, both of them uh, have four sacks. Both of them have entered the transfer portal. And then McKinley Jackson is out as well. 27 tackles, three sacks for him. And then Garen Cooper is out as well. He uh, uh, leads the team, I do believe, in tackles and sacks. Yes, he does. 83 tackles, eight sacks. A phenomenal, phenomenal player. So if you thought there was a lot leaving this offense, there is a ton of talent leaving this defense. And that's just on the defensive front that's generated 42 sacks. I mean, doing some quick math here, you lose uh, 4, 8, uh, 16, 19, and then with uh, a corner in Bryce Anderson gone as well, uh, you're losing almost 20 sacks right there. And it's not a team that forces turnovers a lot anyway, but you lose a lot of defensive backs as well. Bryce Anderson, I just mentioned, is one, but Tyreek Chappell and Deuce Harmon are gone as well. So this is a, a a defense that, look, has played well throughout the entire season. It's been a really good third down defense, doesn't give up the big play through the air, really good rush defense, can bull rush 
the quarterback. They don't really need to be forcing those takeaways, although they helped. They haven't really needed to a lot of the time this year. The defense has held up there, and it's been the offense that has been a little slow at times. But with all of these losses, how is this team going to play? It's going to be very, very fascinating to watch, especially when you go up against an attack at uh, Oklahoma State that has one of the better players in the entire country in running back Ollie Gordon. Now, does he play this game? Does he not? I haven't really heard anything either way. Ollie Gordon has said he's going to make his decision on his own time. So the decision as of recording this video has not come out yet. Maybe it'll come out later as we get closer to this game. Who knows? But as it stands right now, Ollie Gordon is playing. Uh, uh, before uh, the Troy played Duke earlier today, actually, as of uh, re recording this video, Ollie Gordon led uh, the nation in rushing 1,614 yards and 20 rushing touchdowns. He is a phenomenal weapon. Uh, you have Alan Bowman there at quarterback who, hey, can manage a game really effectively but gets turnover prone at times. Has thrown 12 picks so far this season. But the offensive line does a phenomenal job. There are a lot of phenomenal wide receiver weapons out here. One of them you're going to be without with here in Jaden Braves. He's entered the transfer portal. But he was the team's fourth leading receiver. Your top three leading receivers are all back. That's Brandon Presley, Rashad Owens, and Leon Johnson. Uh, Ten touchdowns combined between those guys there as well moving on over to the defensive side of the ball all right this is where Oklahoma State really did struggle at times now they've gotten absolutely lit up by a couple of teams UCF they got absolutely torn up Texas they got absolutely torn up uh in a couple of other games there as well the game way back earlier in the year against South Alabama this defense got shredded but they do a lot of things really really well and especially down the stretch Oklahoma State started to play a whole lot better brand of defense than they have played throughout this entire season. Uh, so these stats may be a little bit skewed, but overall, again, it hasn't been a fantastic defense. It hasn't been a Mike Gundy-type defense that we have seen over the past couple of seasons. Now, they do force turnovers. They have 21 turnovers forced on the season. They're a pretty solid team when, able, when they're able to generate pass rush, but the rush defense is very spotty. The pass defense is susceptible to giving up the big play. The third down defense is not very good. You have a lot of great individual performers, such as Nicholas Martin at linebacker, who has 133 tackles. You have a couple safeties there. Uh, and Kendall Daniels and Trey Rucker that have played really well so far this season, uh, but, but it hasn't really colluded to a great team effort up to this point. This all leads me into my what to watch for, kind of like your keys to the game, whatever you want to call it, just some things I think you guys need to keep an eye on while you're paying attention here to this game. Let's go ahead and go back to the Texas A&M Aggies and start offensively. Again, no Max Johnson, no Connor Wiegman. It'll be Jalen Henderson. He has to make this Oklahoma State secondary pay. Again, this is an Aggie team that has not taken a lot of deep shots down the field. Again, you heard me say the longest pass play they've seen all season has been a 51-yard pass that Jalen Henderson threw. He has the longest play through the air for Texas A&M this season. Jalen Henderson is going to need to make this Oklahoma State secondary that I just said is susceptible to the big plays pay. He needs to make them pay. He needs to be able to get that thing downfield. Uh, and if he and if he can do that, I know it's going to hurt uh, not having two really, really good weapons out there in Smith and Stewart. But if he can get the ball downfield, that's going to provide a whole other issue for this Oklahoma State team because the rush offense will be featured and it will hold up. For as much as this team is losing offensively, they're not losing a lot, if anything, in the running back room. So the running back room is going to be fine. It's going to find its marks. It's going to get it, it, its yards. But the rush defense for Texas A&M will also be key, especially if Ollie Gordon plays. I think no matter what, it's going to end up being challenged because behind Ollie Gordon, you do have some really, really good guys. Now, they haven't shown it to their full ability this year, but Jade Nixon and Elijah Collins probably will be a one-two running back combo if Gordon doesn't play. Uh, but uh, whether Gordon plays, whether he doesn't play, I think this is a, a, a rush defense that gets challenged. But how do you overcome all of these losses through the transfer portal? That's just the biggest question mark that I see Texas A&M facing here. How do you overcome all the opt-outs, the transfer portal losses, uh, especially now no longer being without your head coach? You have to wait for Mike Elko to coach a game here as well. Your defensive coordinator, I believe, is going to be that interim coach uh, before he is off to Syracuse as well. So how does the team handle all of that? Let's quickly go through the keys for the Oklahoma State Cowboys because I've mentioned it throughout this video so many times, but should Ollie Gordon play he will be the feature of this offense. Alan Bowman is fairly turnover prone. Now, 
uh, you look at that bottom point boy as long as turnovers are an issue i think this is a game that with all the loss for texas a&m they should be able to win however we will get back to that if all of if, if ollie gordon doesn't play efficiency is the name of the game offensively for the oklahoma state cowboys that is the the, the prime directive here and that means if ollie gordon doesn't play still run the football at an effective rate pass the football at an effective rate and don't turn it over but this defense needs to find some sort of consistent rhythm are we going to get the defense that can run stop that can bull rush that can make the big play in the secondary or are we going to get the defense that slows down are we going to get the defense that doesn't bring the intensity that it needs to are we going to get the defense that gets beat through the air on the ground that's susceptible to giving up the big plays if the defense can find its rhythm and it can start uh, taking over with this pass rush and it can start limiting what Texas A&M is able to do, that's only going to bode well here for Oklahoma State. And again, as long as turnovers are an issue, I think this should be a game that Oklahoma State wins. Now, this is only the second ranked team that we are uh, previewing here, the 20th ranked team in the country, according to the college football playoff committee i think whatever unit tech saying m rolls out here it's going to be able to compete and it's going to be able to hang strong with oklahoma state but as long as turnovers are an issue i do believe this is the game that oklahoma state should win whether ollie gordon plays or not now i see it being a very close competitive game either way for me this game really is a true coin flip i mean flip a coin up in the air call it and land oh it landed on heads i guess i'm going with oklahoma state right this really does feel like one of those types of games but i think as long as turnovers are not an issue this is the game that oklahoma state will win the aggies will put up a good fight but the cowboys will claim victory 28 27 is the way i see it playing out let me know how you see it playing out in the comment section below and hey as always remember to play hard but tailgate harder i'll see all you guys in the next video goodbye